So the purpose of my involvement today was just to share some personal observations based on the, the theme and the conversation that we've been having. In, 2000, in 1999, my wife and I migrated to Australia. And in 2002, we decided to move to the Maston Ranges. I recognized the vulnerability that I had in buying a piece of land in the Maston Ranges with something called a fire management overlay. It's something that you don't get in England. You don't buy property. You don't have things called fire management overlays. <laughs> in in recognizing that vulnerability, I immediately sought to act and work out how could I equip myself to manage that, manage that risk. And I joined the CFA. Um, probably the wisest decision I ever made, but it's had its moments as well. Um, uh, the first aspect was very much driven by a need of uh, a desire to want to be able to drive a truck with lights and sirens. I'd have to say that enthusiasm and that excitement very quickly disappears when you go to your first fire and you do something in your pants that's probably not quite appropriate. But that also is a privilege and picking up on what Bob was speaking about for me, privilege is clearly associated with capability and capacity to act. For my family, leading up to Black Saturday, we had the economic capability and capacity to act on our fire plan. And that meant for my wife and, and, and the, the children at that time to be able to leave Woodend and come and stay in a hotel in Melbourne every night leading up to. Now, without logic or rhyme or reason, for some reason, when it came to that Saturday or that Friday night, and we had the warnings from the chief coming down, we chose, we made a decision for that night or that next day, my wife would not go into Melbourne. And I also used my privilege to leave my family and go and sit in a fire station waiting for a call somehow thinking that Wood End would be immune, even despite being one of the high-risk towns that it, it was and it, and it still is. <clears throat> I had the privilege of being in Hume Vow at 3 p.m. on that Saturday, and the privilege of being in King Lake that evening, that night, and through the Sunday as well. And it is a privilege, and it was a privilege, to help so many people. What's unfortunate is that, to the examples that we've heard from, is the consequences of, of what the decisions that other people make with respect to their fire plans and the gendered basis of those and those consequences. The most memorable, unfortunate points of that evening and that night we're having to deal with those consequences. Um, Deb just put up the photo of the four cars. I, I hadn't seen that photo for a lot of years. We, we, we came across the, those cars. The families that we came across that had women and children stranded on the hillside, stranded on that road between Whittlesea and King Lake. within a, uh, in a space of not knowing what to do because their partner, their male partner, wasn't there to guide them. What I see today is uh, we've, we seem to have reverted or we don't seem to have learned from this in terms of these proactive discussions around fire plans and a reasonable understanding of what any individual's capacity and capability is when dealing with a risk of a natural disaster. I see it as the most decisive disagreement between partners in our, in our community itself. If, if you want to observe any argument in, a, in, a, in our community, look at the discussion around fire plans. Now, in my experience, leading up to Black Saturday, I would have said personally that I wouldn't have encouraged my wife to stay and defend with having children around, but I thought myself and a couple of mates, I probably could have done a good job. I have no doubts now about staying and defending. I just leave. 
that's not cowardice. That's just prioritizing what's a risk and what's important. I think also in terms of having experienced vulnerability and in relation to the, the role of command and control, there is a role for command and control. There is a, there is a role for direct leadership on the fire ground. My observation is it's how it's done in an inclusive way. So if we, if we, put, if we park Black Saturday for one moment in any other operational involvement on a fire ground, a fire ground is, a, is an, a, a great way for members of a brigade, members of the community to grow through learning through different experiences. But to do that, you have to give those people that experience. So going into Black Saturday, the brigades in the, in the Maston Ranges would have put their best people forward to go onto that fire ground. That inevitably was the best men for the job. <coughs> what I've taken away and what, what we do in our brigade more and more is on every opportunity, having assessed the risk and etc., that we promote opportunities for others to pick up the hose, for others to drive the truck. It's not just about the man with the most experience, the man with the greatest years in the brigade, the man that's the funniest guy and we all want to be around. It's true inclusion and helping others get that experience because that ex experience grows that resilience as we go out to more and more challenging um, events and, and fires. From a diversity aspect, any brigade, any emergency service, irrespective of whether you're paid or volunteer, volunteering, you are or you should be a reflection of the community in which you serve. The more emergency services can become that, rather than just being male dominated, the better we will be to the community and the better we'll be as a, as a professional organization as well. Uh, and lastly, in terms of humor, um, humor, the, the ability to express yourself, the, the ability to share where you're at. Um, after Black Saturday, and, and as the, the research has found, females are, are very good at talking, men not so, and that has led to a lot of ongoing issues in community of men not expressing their fears, their concerns. Is it right that we should talk about it? Is it right that we should cry? Well, we do cry, men do cry. They probably don't cry in the same way as women, but it's not as bipolar or black and white as that. And the ability through the work that's been done post Black Saturday, through the GADPOD and other initiatives to raise awareness for the challenges faced by men and women and how they differ is very important and I strongly encourage organisations that haven't participated or engaged in that space to speak to people from the GADPOD and see how you can become part of that conversation within our communities. Thank you. Thank you Andrew. And thank you to all of our panellists.